the question is direction of vertical root fracture is most the options are buccolingual mesiodistal horizontal planes and the point of least resistance okay before we dive into the direction of root fractures let's first talk about what are the different types of fractures that are that occur in teeth so fractures of the tooth or crack of the tooth, cracks of the teeth can be brought can be classified into five types the first one is a fractured cusp second is an incomplete crown fracture third is an incomplete crown root fracture fourth is a split tooth and the fifth one is a vertical root fracture let's understand each of these terms properly also there is one more which are called craze lines okay so let's understand each of these what are craze lines so craze lines are basically you have the crown of your tooth and in this crown for example like you can see in image a in craze lines you will just have fracture lines that are present in the enamel it is not involved with dentine it is just present in the enamel it can be due to excessive uh, masticatory forces or it can be due to any form of other trauma that is elicited on the tooth by eating something hard or something like that second is a fractured cusp for example in a fractured cusp what will happen is for the maxillary teeth as we know your central groove runs in the mesiodistal plane and then you have the four cusps or the five cusps that are present and each of them have buttressing forces which are directed towards the central groove so for the mandibular teeth you have the central groove or you have the groove you have another groove like this is for example the occlusal plane if these are my cusps you can see this line this line is a point of least resistance so what happens in the mandibular teeth is your fracture occurs along the uh, buccolingual direction and because of that the tooth splits into two in the buccolingual direction or rather you have a mesial fragment and a distal fragment for the maxillary teeth on the other hand again you have the tooth and we are looking at it from the occlusal plane you have the oblique ridge and you have the other two ridges triangular ridges now because you have the oblique ridge the fracture is not going to be able to occur in this plane because the oblique ridge is very strong and it able it is able to bear the buttressing forces however because you have a central groove for the maxillary teeth the fracture occurs in the mesiodistal plane as a result you have a buccal fragment and a palatal fragment for the premolars you have only one central groove and you have two cusps and because of those two cusps again they are sent they are directed centrally you do not have fracture occurring in the uh, like the mandibular teeth but the fracture occurs according to the maxillary ma maxillary molars and therefore you will have a palatal fragment and a buccal fragment so when you have a cuspal fracture or a fractured cusp only a part of the cusp is completely broken out now what is an incomplete crown fracture an incomplete crown fracture is it involves a part a complete part of the tooth like for example this can be an incomplete fracture okay a, an incomplete crown root fracture is where it involves both the crown as well as the root however it has not penetrated completely where the tooth has split into two a split tooth like i told you where you have a buccal fragment and a palatal fragment or you have a, a mesial fragment and a distal fragment that is a split tooth where the tooth has completely split into two different parts and you have to either do a hemisection where you can try to save it by a hemisection or you will have to probably just remove one of the parts or probably you have to extract both the parts of the tooth the last one is a vertical root fracture where you have a fracture only of the root segment now vertical root fractures are usually very difficult to diagnose only based on clinical findings you need to have a radiograph and, and most often than not you will have to also use probing techniques in order to identify a vertical root fracture so when you have a vertical root fracture what you would do is when you take a radiograph you would see a very typical j shaped radiolucency this is diagnostic and pathognomonic of vertical root fractures so what do you do is apart from radiographs what other method you can use is you can use a probing technique you take a probe and you start probing the sulcus gingival sulcus if it was a periodontal pocket 
the shape of the periodontal pocket would have been somewhat like this. So, the probing depth will keep increasing. However, when you have a vertical root fracture, the probing will be excess, will be very deep only in one portion. So, when I take a probe and I run it, there will be a deep pocket only in one region and then the entire sulcus will measure completely normal. That is one more way of diagnosing a, a vertical root fracture. Usually for vertical root fractures, it is better to use a plastic probe than a steel probe because a plastic probe is able to go all the way up to the sulcus and go all the way up to the area of the defect. Like for example, if this is a J-shaped radiolucency, the plastic probe will be able to go all the way here because it is even more easy to and flexible to bend. That is why you use a plastic probe. Now, when you have a vertical root fracture, see as you can see over here, you have a J-shaped radiolucency that means you have bone loss that has occurred. So, the patterns of bone loss that can occur in a vertical root fracture can either be, it can follow the pattern of the sulcus like I told you. It is just a very deep and narrow defect or it can be a J-shaped radiolucency like what we had seen. So, this is your deep and narrow. This is your J-shaped radiolucency and this can be only a dehiscence. So, only in the region where you have the fracture over there, there can be bone loss on the buccal or the palatal plate. Now, coming to the question over here, when it comes to vertical root fractures, the fracture line will follow the line of uh, where it is very easy for the tooth to split. So, for it to occur, the, a lot of studies were conducted and they came to realize that whenever you have a vertical root fracture, the least resistance for these is along the buccolingual plate. What does that mean? That the tooth splits into the mesial and the distal like how you have for the mandibular teeth, mandibular crowns, the tooth just splits along the mesial and the distal direction and it splits into two. That is the reason why the answer to the question is also the buccolingual plane because the fracture line runs in the buccal and lingual direction and splits the tooth, root into a mesial and a distal fragment. Treatment for such cases is usually extraction because you cannot save the root or the tooth. That is why.